Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 6.10. Use properties of addition. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to add fractions and mix numbers with unlike denominators using addition properties. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Before we read the unlock the problem, you can see at the top of your page, there's a little section talking about the different properties. We learned the properties all the way back in unit one, but let's review them before we continue on. The two properties that we are going to talk about today are the commutative property and the associative property. The commutative property allows me to move my numbers around. So you can see here, I went from having one half plus three fifths, and then I flipped them. Now I have three fifths, plus one half. The commutative property, we think of like a little car, so I'm going to draw a steering wheel, where you can drive your numbers around to different places and you'll still get the same answer. The associative property is like our business associates. It's who we hang out with and this is our grouping symbols. So you can see here I have two ninths plus one eighth plus three eighths. And then on the other side of the equal sign, I have two ninths, one eighth, and three eighths. So they're in the same order. I didn't move them. But what I did move is my grouping symbols. They were around these two. Now they're around these two. Remember I said the grouping symbols are kind of like holding hands. They're kind of like who you hang out with, your business associates. Let's use this idea with fractions. Jane and her family are going to Big Lagoon State Park. On the first day, they travel one-third of the total distance. On the second day, they travel one-third of the total distance. In the morning, they travel one-sixth of the total distance in the afternoon. How much of the total distance has Jane's family driven by the end of the second day? So we are going to add one-third plus one-third plus one-sixth. Well, let's think about using the associative property to group our thirds together so that we don't have to change our denominators right away. So instead of having one-third plus parentheses, one-third plus six, let's move our parentheses around the one-third plus one-third and then one-sixth on the outside. So I've kept the order of the numbers, but I've moved my grouping symbols. But now I can do one-third plus one-third easily in my head. That's two thirds plus one sixth. Now I'm going to need a common denominator, but instead of having to change two numbers to a common denominator, I only have to change one. In order to make a three into a six, we have to multiply by two. And the top number is two, so two times two is four. Four plus one six, I can do that easily in my head, is five six. So they have driven five six of their distance by the end of the second day. Great job, fifth graders. Now let's combine the commutative property and the associative property. So we're going to move them and we're going to group them. So you can see that we have two and five eighths plus one and two thirds plus one and one eighth. So let's go ahead and write it to the side and we're going to write it as is first off. So two and five eighths plus one and two thirds plus one and one eighth. Now remember the reason why we use grouping symbols is to make mental math easier. So the thing that I see that's kind of weird is that we have eighths and thirds but they're not together. So let's go ahead and move them together. So, so I'm going to put my one and two thirds out in front. So I'm going to put the thirds by itself. And then I'm going to put the two and five eighths together with the one and one eighth. So that means now are they, they're together and I have grouping symbols around them. So I'm allowed to add them first. So I have one and two thirds, and then we can do this math in our head. Five plus one is six eighths, 
and 2 plus 1 is 3. So we have 3 and 6 eighths. Now we are going to need a common denominator. Let's go ahead and change them. 3 and 8 have a common denominator of 24. In order to make a 3 into a 24, I have to multiply by 8. So 2 times 8 is 16. So I have 1 and 16 24 ths. Then I'm going to change my 3 and 6 eighths. In order to change 8 into a 24, I have to multiply by 3. 6 times 3 is 18. Now let's add our numerators. So we have 16 plus 18. 8 plus 6 is 14, carry the 1, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we end up with 34 24 fourths, and then we need to add our whole numbers in front. So we have, this just should be a 1, sorry, 1 plus 3 is 4. So I have 4 and 34 24 fourths. Well, I know that 24 goes into 34 one time, so that means my 4 is going to change into a 5, and if I have 34 minus 24, I'm going to be left over with 10 24 ths but even this is not quite in simplest form because 10 and 24 are both even so I'm gonna keep my 5 but I'm gonna rename this down to 5 twelfths in order to get to simplest form so you can see we did still have to change our denominators but we put our eighths together first which helped us simplify the problem Great job, fifth graders. All right, it's time for the lesson activity. Today's lesson activity is the try this part of your paper, number A. You can go ahead and work out the problem on your math paper. Just be prepared to show your work to your teacher at the teacher table. So you can see here we have 5 and 1 fourth plus 3 fourths plus 1 and 5 twelfths. So the thing that I notice again right away is that the fourths are not next to each other. So I don't need to change the order of my numbers, but I do need to change my grouping symbols placement. So that would be the associative property. So five and one fourth plus three fourths, and I'm gonna put that in parentheses, plus one and five twelfths. All right, three fourths plus one fourth is four fourths, so I have five and four fourths, which I could also just call six. So now I have six plus one and five twelfths. And now look, I don't even have to actually change my denominator, I just need to add. So you can do that part on your own and answer in your math pages. Great job, fifth graders.